Hello and welcome to this lesson on propaganda. You will be using what you learn in this lesson when you are creating your campaign commercials and your campaign websites. This lesson will cover learning targets 5 and 6. Learning target 5 is the student will be able to define propaganda. And learning target 6 is the students will be able to identify the different kinds of propaganda used in political campaign ads. What do you know about propaganda? You probably remember propaganda from your history classes. You've seen posters and ads made by the government during wartime to get the general public behind the war. Propaganda is used each election cycle. Each October and November, especially in even number years because you have bigger elections those years, the TVs are bombarded with political ads. I'm Barack Obama. I'm John McCain, and I approve this message. I'm Bridget Mary McCormick, and I approve this message. Now is the time for all good Americans to come to the aid of their country. Each one of these political ads uses propaganda. Propaganda is the use of information that is biased in order to persuade people to think a certain way. We see propaganda in all advertising. There are eight common propaganda techniques. They are name calling, glittering generalities, plain folk, testimonial, transfer, bandwagon, card stacking, and subliminal. The first technique is called name calling. This is what it sounds like. When you use this technique, you are presenting your rival or rival opinion in a negative light. This is often done in conjunction with other propaganda techniques. If you hear, Senator Bob Smith is a crook and a liar, or Congresswoman Jones is a tax and spend liberal, then you have heard someone using name calling. In the late part of the 2008 presidential election, the Republicans ran this campaign ad that illustrates name calling. The name of the ad is Disrespectful. He was the world's biggest celebrity, but his star's fading. So they lashed out at Sarah Palin, dismissed her as good-looking. That backfired, so they said she was doing what she was told. Then, desperately, called Sarah Palin a liar. 
How disrespectful. And how Governor Sarah Palin proves them wrong every day. I'm John McCain, and I approve this message. The next technique is called glittering generality. Glittering generality uses flowery language to communicate big ideas without specific facts. It's the American way. Change you can believe in. Hope. Forward. Stronger America. These are all terms that communicate a big idea, and they will resonate with people, but there is no big plan behind the big idea. In 1984, Ronald Reagan was running for re-election. This ad, called Morning in America, was very popular. It's morning again in America. Today, more men and women will go to work than ever before in our country's history. With interest rates at about half the record highs of 1980, nearly 2,000 families today will buy new homes more than at any time in the past four years. This afternoon, 6,500 young men and women will be married. And with inflation at less than half of what it was just four years ago, they can look forward with confidence to the future. It's morning again in America. And under the leadership of President Reagan, our country is prouder and stronger and better. Why would we ever want to return to where we were less than four short years ago? Some people have a bad opinion of politicians, all politicians. The plain folk technique is used by politicians to tell people, we're not one of them, we're one of you. They use it to identify themselves with ordinary people. I grew up in this town. I practiced law or ran my business here. I'm from this town, not from Washington. Jimmy Carter's 1976 campaign ad is a good example of this. I'm a southerner, and I'm proud of a heritage that shows concern for the working men and women who are the backbone of our great nation. These are the people who are often cheated by an unfair system of government. These are the people forgotten by the present administration. While the influential and powerful get special favors, when I'm elected president, that will change. We in the South can help by voting for Jimmy Carter, a leader for a change. Testimonial is an effective method of propaganda because you are taking someone that is famous, an actor, an athlete, an author, and using their celebrity to explicitly endorse or advocate for your particular cause. We see this every day. LeBron endorses Samsung and McDonald's. Peyton Manning endorses Buick and Papa John's. In the next two ads, we will see how celebrities help endorse politicians. In the first clip, the cast of the West Wing reunites to endorse the sister of one of the cast members. Previously on the West Wing. Hey, crisis. Are you calling me crisis? Like as my hip hop nickname? I'm saying there's a crisis. Is it serious? No, Will, it's frivolous. It's a frivolous crisis. Walk and talk. I'm really stretched. Ever. Ah, stupid coffee maker. Please tell me this isn't the crisis. This isn't the crisis. Is this the voting thing? It's what the voting thing? The crisis. Is the crisis the voting thing? What voting thing? It's the voting thing. How'd you find out? Josh. This is a disaster. It's a catastrophe. It is a cataclysmic event, unrivaled Josh. by the likes of any calamity since the dawn of hey, history. Hey. You can't. Boo boo. Ballpark the odds of you reaching your point any time in the frantic foreseeable future. People aren't voting. For us or the other guy, because there's two ways to see that. No, in nonpartisan elections all across America, voters are leaving part of their ballots blank, and they don't even know it. OK, explain this to me like I'm a two-year-old, and try to do it like you're not. Come on, I'll give you a lolly. Okay. People walk into the voting booth, they check the straight party ticket box, and they think that they have voted for everything, but they haven't. They still have to vote on the nonpartisan section of the ballot. That's the part towards the back. Usually, but not necessarily. They still have to look for it. And it's not rocket science, it's labeled, but it takes the voter like an extra 10 seconds to find it. So it's a thing. We're not talking dog catching here. State Supreme Court. State Supreme Court. Michigan 
is one of 15 states that uses nonpartisan elections to choose their Supreme Court justices. This is Bridget Mary McCormick. It's Mary McCormick's sister. She's running for state Supreme Court in the nonpartisan section of the ballot. Married, mother of four, dean at Michigan Law. Bridget has spent her entire career fighting for justice for ordinary people, for families with sick kids, for victims of domestic violence. She's fought to free innocent men and women and get the actual criminals behind bars. She likes baseball, and I'm going to buy her a ring. Seriously? Quick question. Who's Mary McCormick? Who's Mary McCormick? No clue, but something tells me she's delightful and whip-smart, possibly hot. Hard to say, really. Come on, we're walking and talking. Harold, copies of Josh's brief. For the little big man? Already in his hands. Music to my ears. If people fail to realize that a straight ticket vote doesn't count in nonpartisan races, if they just casually vote the party line, then their interest will continue to go unrepresented. Josh is convinced that it's something more than a crisis. He's upgraded it to a calamity, a catastrophe. I'm telling you, it's an apocalypse. It's an apocalypse now? What say you, CJ? Shall we have calmer heads prevail? Mr. President, as you know, the men and women who sit on the state Supreme Courts rule on issues that affect literally millions of Americans. Nothing big, you know, niche issues like civil rights. The environment. Workplace protections. Border protection. This isn't even about which side of those issues you're on. We should do something because that's... Because we can. And my suggestion box is wide open. All it would take, really, is a gentle reminder for people to look for the nonpartisan section on their ballot and go vote there. I was thinking we could make a video. Right, maybe with beloved TV personalities, one of whom might be considered a movie star handsome Louis C.K. Wow, really? Read the message board. When the solution is simple, God is answering. That's a quote from some old quack named Einstein. All right, friends, let it be written, let it be done. This is Federer, let us away. What's next? I'm Bridget Mary McCormick, and I approve this message. In 2008, then-candidate Obama gave a powerful speech during the campaign. The musician Will I Am turned that speech into a music video. While all the stars are just repeating Obama's speech, they are also signaling that they endorse candidate Obama. It was a creed written into the founding documents that declared the destiny of the nation. Yes, we can. It was whispered by slaves and abolitionists as they blazed the trail toward freedom. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. It was sung. It was sung by immigrants as they struck out the distant shore of pioneers who pushed westward. Yes, we can. It was the call of workers organized, women who reached for the ballots, a president who chose the moon as our new frontier, and a king who took us to the mountaintop and pointed the way to the promised land. Yes, we can for justice and equality. Yes, we can. 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 The opportunity and the prosperity. Yes, we can. The opportunity and the prosperity. Yes, we can heal this nation. Heal this nation. Yes, we can repair this world. Yes, we can. 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 We know the battle ahead will be long. But always remember that no matter what obstacles stand in our way, nothing can stand the way of the power of millions of voices calling for change. We have 
we've been told we cannot do this by a chorus of sentence. It they will only, only grow louder, louder and more disciplined. disciplined. We've been asked to pause for a reality check. We've been warned against offering the people of this nation false hope. But in the, but in the unlikely story, story that is America, America, there's, there's never, never been, been anything, anything false about all hope. hope. are the same as the dreams of boy who learns on the streets of LA. We will remember that there's something happening in America. That we are not as divided as our politics suggest. That we are one people. That we are one nation. And together, we will begin the next great chapter in the American story with three words that will ring from coast to coast. From sea to shining sea. Yes, yes, we can. 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 A common propaganda technique used in political campaigns is transfer. When a politician or an ad uses transfer, they are suggesting a connection between a candidate or a product and something or someone else through the use of images. It can be a positive or negative. An example of transfer is this ad about our Senator Sherrod Brown. The Republicans in the race thought it would be, make him look bad if he was linked to President Obama. Sherrod Brown promised to stand up for Ohio families. I'll stand up to the president of my own party. I will show more independence when I'm in the Senate because my allegiance will be to Ohio, oh, not to the president. He has failed us. One of the most famous political ads of all time was the Willie Horton ad. In 1988, Michael Dukakis was running against Vice President George H.W. Bush and doing quite well. An independent Republican group ruled out the Willie Horton ad to play on fears of American voters. The ad was race baiting at its worst. It tied Dukakis to a scary looking black man who was convicted of murdering people while on furlough. Bush and Dukakis on crime. Bush supports the death penalty for first degree murderers. Dukakis not only opposes the death penalty, he allowed first degree murderers to have weekend passes from prison. One was Willie Horton, who murdered a boy in a robbery, stabbing him 19 times. Despite a life sentence, Horton received 10 weekend passes from prison. Horton fled, kidnapped a young couple, stabbing the man and repeatedly raping his girlfriend. Weekend prison passes. Dukakis on crime. When something is popular and everyone rushes to be part of it, people are said to be jumping on the bandwagon. Bandwagon is the idea that something is good because it is popular. This ad from Ronald Reagan's re-election campaign of 1984 is an example of that. On a Friday, just a few weeks ago, the barbershop closed three hours early. The mill shut its doors at noon. And all across the state, people were taking time out for something special, a train carrying the 40th president of the United States and bringing with it a new spirit of accomplishment and optimism and pride. Because in the past three and a half years, things have been looking up in the country. Today, the economy is up. Taxes and inflation are down. Americans are working again. And so is America. So, while some folks might have come so they could tell their grandchildren they saw President Reagan, most of them just stopped by to say thanks. President Reagan, leadership that's working.
One of the first campaign ads ever to be on TV was this bandwagon ad made by Roy Disney for Dwight D. Eisenhower. I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president, you like I, I like I, everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take I to Washington. We don't want John or Dean or Harry. Let's do that big job right. Just get in step with the guy that's up. Get in step with I. You like I, I like I, everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take I to Washington. We got to get where we are going. Travel day and night for president. Let LA go the other way. We'll all go with I. President. You like I, I like I. Everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. We'll take I to Washington. We'll take I to Washington. Now is the time for all good Americans to come to the aid of their country. Card stacking is a commonly used technique in politics because the use of statistics seems so authoritative. Card stacking is using statistics and selected facts to present only one side of the story. Nine out of ten doctors, surveyed, those sort of things. In this ad, Governor John Kasich uses card stacking to make his time as governor look productive as possible. Four years ago, Ohio was in free fall. An $8 billion deficit, only 89 cents in Ohio's rainy day fund. High unemployment, 350,000 jobs lost. It was ugly. Then John Kasich stepped in, went to work, erased the deficit without raising taxes. Kasich filled the rainy day fund, protecting Ohio's future. Unemployment dropped 33%, nearly a quarter million new jobs. Governor Kasich is building Ohio's future. There's still work to do, and John Kasich works. Subliminal messaging is very similar to transfer. Subliminal messaging involves suggesting a message without saying it directly, either through words or through images. The most famous subliminal ad made was the Daisy ad. In this ad, President Johnson's campaign is trying to suggest that if Barry Goldwater was elected, very bad things would happen. children can live are to go into the dark. We must either love each other or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. There's a reason the candidates buy a lot of TV ads. They do it because these ads can reach a lot of people that don't pay much attention to the campaign or to politics. Many people will base their vote on a 30-second commercial that they see between spins on Wheel of Fortune. Have you found any propaganda techniques that may work for your campaign commercial? <laughs> 